Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. We are starting a brand new series today called The Homestead Collection. It's inspired by all things homestead related like chickens and farm fresh eggs and Sunday breakfast and blooming tulips and all of that kind of good stuff. I'll show you some of the things I pinned in my Pinterest board. You can see little baby cows and rabbits and honey. We typically do a collection like this once a year in the springtime because it so perfectly encapsulates everything about spring and also because this is very close to me. I live in a very agriculturally focused area in Texas. All of my neighbors have cattle. Um, most everyone around here has a garden or something like that. A lot of people are very enthusiastic about sunflowers and blue bonnets and other wildflowers native to Texas. So this is near and dear to my heart. And then of course we have a chicken lady soap that you guys will see a little bit later that is very much inspired by my mom and all of her 50 chickens. <laughs> so without further ado, let's make some soap. Okay guys, let me show you what I'm gonna try to do. So here is my soap design sheet. So I have all of these cutie flowers in the background. You kind of get the vibe. I don't realistically know how this is going to look, okay? I'm not the best artist. It looks a little different in my head than it does on this paper, but essentially what we're going for is dark pink, a light yellow, a really light pink, and a white in the middle. Now how the drop is gonna look, we don't know. And of course, of course, we will be using the Camellia Sugar Fragrance Oil from Brambleberry. It's part of their new collection. Their new collection is my favorite scent collection I think they've ever released. I have been on their PR list for quite some time, so I don't say that lightly. Every single fragrance is a winner. It's the Sweetheart Collection. I'll put something on the screen now for you to see. It's the Sweetheart Collection from Brambleberry. Absolutely stunning. So let's start by adding in our water solution. I don't have any titanium dioxide in it today. I have all my PPE on. We talked about how important wearing safety items like gloves and goggles. I wear a hairnet. That's not for safety. It's just because hair in your customer's soap is really gross. I wear protective arm covers, I wear pants, I wear shoes, and in Fulfillment, where we make lots of big batches, we actually also wear aprons, we use face shields over our protective eyewear, and we use foot covers that we only use in the soap making room, and you have to remove them if you go into the rest of the establishment. So it's a lot, but better safe than sorry. Gonna burp my stick blender. I hate calling it burping the stick. I'm always saying that. It's what it's what everyone says, but it just makes it sound like it's, you know, belching into my oils and then infusing the oils with the stick blender burp, which is so gross. I mean, wh why am I unpacking this right now? Let's just blend it up. Okay, everything is blended as much as I need it to be blended right now. I'm just gonna put the stick blender off to the side and then I'm gonna very carefully measure out my three accent colors because I can't get this wrong or there's not gonna be enough soap to go around. Also, just in case you don't know, because we do remake the soaps that I make here on the channel, I have to write a recipe while I am making soap live. That's something in the background you guys don't see because it's not directly in your uh, line of vision here, but I'm just letting you know I'm also writing a recipe while I'm filming, while I'm making up the recipe as I go along. So it's a lot of moving parts. So this is going to be our biggest accent color. This is the light yellow. Okay, now we're going to do less than that for our light pink. Awesome. And our final color, it's just a teeny tiny bit of white. We'll literally only be able to make like one pass with this. And honestly, that's too much because I won't be able to stick my stick blender in if I filled it up that much. Right, so let's move this off to the side. Okay, so we have our main color here. That's the pink. We have our yellow, 
we have our light pink and then we have our white. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the sides of my container here. Someone sent me this spatula and I don't use it that often, but I really should because look how cute it is. It looks like it has sprinkles in it. <laughs> okay, let's talk colors. So into our first container, we have Cosmic Carolyn, our perfect pink girl. And my teeny tiny mini spatula. I'm going to use that to get every single little bit out into our container. And then we're going to add our titanium dioxide. This is going to help our kind of warm toned pinky color look even more pastel. Then we're going to add some titanium dioxide into this container. And tennis ball breaker. This is a neon yellow. It's very, very bright and it will not fade. Little bit of pink left over from my scraper. Don't worry, you won't be able to see it. Once again, going in with our pink here and our white and then finally our white. Woo! That was like seven different cups, but I think this is going to be the perfect ratio. Now we're going to add the proper amount of fragrance oil with kale and clay into each one of the containers. Because I have never used this fragrance oil before, I'm actually going to mix it up one layer at a time and then pour just to avoid any unpleasant surprises like ricing, acceleration, separation, all the things that soap makers hate to run into. Let's blend up our first one and see how that goes. Okay, looks pretty good. Performing beautifully, actually. I'm going to go on the edges here a little bit, mix it around before I get this poured, just to make sure everything is good and incorporated. And then let's move these colors off to the side. I'll mix them off camera and you guys can see me pour them. Okay, we're going to get all of this pink in. It looks so stunning and it smells incredible. I can't even describe it. This month has some of the better smells that I've been able to curate. I have a very large selection of smells at my fingertips, as you guys can probably imagine. I have all of the catalog of Wholesale Supplies Plus and Nature's Garden and AFI and Candle Science and Lone Star Candle and Brambleberry. It's just, there's so many choices now for soap makers and I'm so grateful grateful for that because it hasn't always been this way. There haven't always been suppliers that are 100% dedicated to getting handcrafted provisions to people, to handcrafters. So we just live kind of during an amazing time to be alive for this sort of thing. So many resources at our fingertips. Now for the yellow, we're going to pour a very large amount right into the middle. Then I'm going to do the equal amount on this side. And then I am going to scrape this out very quickly because we need to move along. Gonna level this out like so. All right, next pink right down the middle, just like so. Ooh, that looks so cool. It's like volcanoing the soap a little bit. That pink, I can already tell, is too close to the other pink color, so I will be changing that in the future to be even lighter. I just added a little bit too much Cosmic Carolyn. Okay, we only have one little line left. Okay, one stripe of white right down the middle. All right, let me tap these down. All right, everything has been tapped down, so I can go ahead and start on our soap frosting. Okay, so I have my soap frosting all loaded up here. It's a two-toned green and a different piping tip. It's the 826 tip. So this is like a really flowery, fluffy looking tip. It's very similar to the Wilton 1M. It's just bigger. And I picked this for the flower fields because I just thought it would be a nice change of pace and look more like lovely, I don't know, just like flowery, bushy fields or something. I don't know. It just, we needed to change it up for this soap. This soap is special. <laughs> I haven't used the 808 in a really long time. I have found that customers don't like that tip as much. And honestly, it's so much harder to do that I don't even care. <laughs> but I'm glad y'all don't like it because it's harder to work with. It is so good for certain soaps. Like there you can't hardly get away from it if you're doing a cloud soap because it's just so perfect. But if you're doing something else, there are easier tips to work with. And my particular customer base 
face doesn't seem to prefer that one. I'm so excited for the warmer weather. I hope I don't regret saying that because I do live in Texas and it is a nightmare to live here sometimes as far as the weather is concerned. But I am one of those people that just gets very gloomy in the wintertime. My mom was always on top of me to make sure that I got out in the sun as much as I could during the cold months because I would just get so sad. <laughs> and so the change of the season is so helpful to my creativity, my mindset, just absolutely everything. And now to kind of help me deal with everything, Caleb gives me so many vitamins, y'all. So many vitamins. He is like a crunchy man. <laughs> And he hasn't always been this way. So it's just so funny to see him coming into this world of like health, wellness, nutrition. He has so many vitamins for me. And I can't tell you the difference it has made. It's like night and day. And if I don't get my vitamins in the morning, I can tell. So Caleb has really done the most. He's done all the research. He's found all the reputable vitamin brands. He's found out what works for him. And of course, he takes them every day and stuff too. But it's always just so funny to me that he's the one in our relationship that's like the vitamin and health guru. I do care about health. I shouldn't say that. But out of the two of us, he has done so much more research and I trust his opinion over mine. I think we've just naturally found out about each other that if one person is geeking out about a subject, the other one can kind of sit down and relax. Because like, let me tell you, when he was like, I'm going to look into this vitamin thing, I was like, hey, bro, more power to you. That's one thing on my list I don't have to check out. I don't know if this is the case for everybody, but I feel like once it's in good hands, I can trust him enough to give me all the pertinent information. And then he can share that with me. Um, We, we have a limited amount of time. <laughs> we can research certain things. We're both small business owners. We have a lot on our plate. So if one of us can like tackle a large research task or something about like parenting or something awesome then the other one is free and clear to fill up their brain with something else <laughs> Caleb and I have been married for almost seven years it will be seven years in May on May oh my gosh have I forgot my I think it's the 21st <laughs> Just marriage has gotten so much better for us as we've gone on. Those first couple of years were a little rough. Nothing we couldn't handle, but just hard to learn how to live with someone who is raised so differently from you, has a totally different like background and upbringing. We did not grow up in the same circle. Oh, by the way, Latchkey Lusters. I am using their Diamond Souls glitter. Look at that. Wow, it's so pretty. Look at this. It's like a bluey, kind of goldy, purpley glitter, and I'm just putting it all across the top before I add the embeds. Yeah, we didn't have the same upbringing at all. Um, he is kind of from the Kansas area. He was raised an only child. He does have other siblings, but they were so much older than he is. And then, of course, you guys know I am the oldest of 10. <laughs> so he was like an only child. I was like oldest of 10. So you can see just from right there how things could be complicated. There are going to be four flowers on the top of each soap bar today. I'm going to start start with these purpley ones. They're kind of red, really. And I'm going to put one in and then I'm going to skip a bar so that we have a good product shot. But these last two years, as far as our marriage has gone, has been like the best two years. We're still very much in love. People ask me that sometimes. And the answer is yes. Still very much like want to be with each other all the time. We kind of had a long distance dating relationship. We lived an hour and a half away from one another. Um, So we only saw each other like once a month, maybe twice a month. So when we got married, we like never wanted to be apart. And I know a lot of people have asked about us working because Caleb is with me every single day. And I know a lot of couples, somebody is going off to work or maybe both people are going off to work. And so your time
time together is so much more limited than say mine and Caleb's would be. We spend way more time with one another than other people do. And a lot of people have said like, how do you manage that? Like I would literally want to kill my spouse <laughs> if I have to be with them that much. But you get used to it. And I think some people are just meant to spend more time together. And we're one of them. I love being with him. I get homesick for him if I'm gone for you know, maybe like a day and a half. I'm already like, okay, that was enough. That was fun, but let's go home. <laughs> now let's do some green flowers. These are so cute. These will match the tops perfectly. We were just talking about last night, quite literally last night, we were talking about how marriage advice is so hard to give universally because couples are so different. That is one of my greatest takeaways from having like wedding showers and stuff was I had to throw out like 95% of the advice that was given to me because it just wasn't relevant to my situation. Caleb is such a unique type of person. He's a very unique type of man. I'm sure he would tell you that I am also a unique type of person, but I also would bet that everybody would say that about their spouse. They would probably tell you, well, they're just really unique. Well, this situation is just different. And that's like the case for everyone. So giving like flat, this works for marriages advice is like not something I'm a fan of because I know firsthand how incredibly diverse people are. So occasionally I get asked like, what's a piece of relationship advice? You know, seven years married, 10 years together and happier than ever. Uh, but I, I'm always, I, I can barely give one because everyone's so unique. W what works for me may not work for you. I mean, I could tell you some things that work for us, but you would have to like assess your own situation and see if that would even work for you. Some of the things that we have put in place in our marriage is that number one, when there's an argument or a disagreement, we try not to make the other person the enemy. Most of the time, it's a situation that's the enemy. A, a problem, a stressor. It's not the other person, but the temptation and arguments is always to make it the other person's fault, especially if you're both mad. So Caleb and I purposefully, whenever we have disagreements, do not attack the other person because chances are it may not even be them that's the problem. And even if it is, attacking them just doesn't work well for us. <laughs> Time for some pee. Yeah, we just have, we have lines. We will not cross. I know things about him and he knows things about me that are like sensitive and hard. And so we absolutely will not use those as ammunition because at the end of the day, we're wanting conflict resolution. We're not wanting to come out on top. We don't want there to be a winner per se. We want everyone to leave with their lives being enhanced and better. So if I'm keeping that as the forefront of all difficult conversations, it completely changes the tone of the conversation, even if he has a problem with me directly or I have a problem with him directly. Because if you're not looking to villainize that other person and you're looking to help them, even if they're frustrating you, man, it just changes the whole tone of the conversation. And I wish I could have told my younger self that faster so that I could have gotten a head start on that. All right, now for some cream colored ones. Another piece of advice I would give for myself, again, this may not work for everyone, but it certainly worked for us was to try to resolve conflict within a day if possible. That's not always possible, but for minor things where people are getting just like peeved over a situation, trying not to let the sun go down on your anger, as it were, I think has been really helpful to us. We also don't punish one another in so much as saying like, if there's been an argument, nobody's going to sleep on the couch. Uh, we are not like that. Maybe that works for other people, but we have just found that that prolongs our arguments and just hurts each other's feelings more. So we don't do that. It's it's like, yes, we're both frustrated, but we both need to sleep well or we'll be even grouchier tomorrow. Like nobody's going to have a good time if nobody gets good sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? My third thing was having a fun thing to do after a conflict. So once a conflict has been resolved, or at least you both feel like you have peace on the matter, finding something fun to do just to like reestablish the good relationship. We like to, you know, have a meal that both of us enjoy, or maybe there's a game that we both like playing. We like playing games. In fact, we're playing Lego Star Wars right now on the Switch. We're not video game people, but I would just told him we would be so good at this together. Admittedly, he is so much better than I am. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I am. I thought I was going to be better, but playing on the Switch is different than playing on the GameCube. Okay, it just is. So I feel I am more of a hindrance to him in that game than I am a help, but I digress. We enjoy playing that as, you know, just a fun thing to do with one another after we're trying to reestablish 
establish ourselves and remind each other of like, hey, we're still committed here. It's this conversation, this argument was a drop in the bucket of our lifetime together. So let's do something fun. So there's my three pieces of maybe more universal advice than I received. I got very specific advice when I got married, but those I think you could amend per relationship. And to tie it all in, yeah, um, if one of us decides to geek out or nerd out about something, we're totally supportive of the other one. But we also kind of check that off of our list as being like, okay, somebody in this pair knows that information. So that's good enough. <laughs> we don't both have to know everything all the time. And then if the need for that personal expertise comes up later, well, we've got somebody that can speak on the matter. <laughs> Last little embed here. Let me check and make sure I got everybody. I think I did. Looks like it. I'm always having to check the M pieces because those are the ones I forget most often. But everything looks good. Look, you guys. Oh, it's so pretty and it smells so good. I'm going to zoom you in very gently. Don't want to make anybody dizzy. That's why I stopped turning the soaps because it was making some folks dizzy. So very gently, very slowly, I'll turn it so you can see. Here's all of these colors. And then on this side, all these colors with all the glitters and sparkles. And we'll be back in 18 to 24 hours to chop up these soaps and see what that design looks like on the inside. I'm a little nervous, but hopefully it all worked out okay. Just look at this soap, you guys. Look how lovely that green turned out. Let's turn it on its side here. Okay, I think that's about perfect. Pull one out from the middle, and this is what it looks like on the inside. So, this little edge right here, you can probably see it's a light yellow color, will turn pink. This lighter pink color does indeed need to be lighter. I actually like the yellow, and then I added too much water to my titanium dioxide, so I ended up with some glycerin rivers in that area, but that won't happen in the future because I won't use quite as much <laughs> glycerin. Really dig in that two-tone frosting. That was a good move. And I like the design too. I might add a swirl in the future. Maybe just like a butterfly swirl. So it all stays roughly in one spot. But I'm not loving the way it looks. I'm not even going to say why. It just doesn't look quite right. The smell is incredible though. And I'm really pleased with the top colors. So it's not a, like a total loss or anything. But I will improve it as I go on. Okay, question of the day. Does a flower being fragrant make you like it more, i.e. a lily or a rose. They smell really nice. Do we like them more because they smell good? I really like dahlias and they don't smell from the ones I've smelled. Maybe there are some varieties that do, but the ones that I have smelled don't. But they look so beautiful, they look like they should smell good. <laughs> So besides that little bit that I need to tweak when it comes to the light pink color and the white with too much titanium dioxide, I am really liking this. I will probably use a hanger swirl because as things have continued to sit and cure, it just looks a lot better. But this is our first soap of the collection. You guys be sure to check out the Brambleberry collection. I will link it down below with all of those amazing fragrance oils. They are so good. And um, I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I also know that this intro and outro is a little bit different. All of this will make sense, okay? <laughs> we had some things we had to deal with in my family at the beginning of this year, and then after that, I have a different type of something I'm dealing with now. I will probably let you guys know in about April-ish what I'm talking about, but trust me, all the weird intros and outros and stuff will all make sense, and um, I will see you guys soon. I'm so excited. Just, just wait and see. The next videos are gonna be so fun. Have an absolutely royal day. Do something fun for yourself today, like like making something for a costume. You see this basket behind me? That is for a costume I'm going to be using in April when I go to the Scarborough Renaissance Fair. We have some really cool stuff coming out in regards to the fair. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Have an absolutely royal day. Do something fun for you and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Meow.